thank you, sir, for the kind words. And uh, you have been a source of inspiration to me. Uh, and I would like to thank for the ACP Symposia on this PSG uh, uh, conference. And thanks to Dr. Rutul and Dr. Amit. A difficult topic, I should say, uh, but a lot of learning uh, after. And I think I would be able to convey the association between anemia and GDM. On listening, we agree anemia is very, very common during the pregnancy. So uh, what role it can play or uh, uh, let's just see to it. So as we have been hearing throughout the day, pregnancy is uh, the journey with ups and downs. It, anemia is one of the most commonly encountered medical problems seen during pregnancy. The Southeast Asian countries, the WHO estimate India has the highest prevalence of uh, anemia in pregnancy. Uh, around 50% of Indian women are uh, anemic, pregnant Indian women, against the global prevalence. And iron deficiency anemia being the most common type of anemia during pregnancy. By definition, uh, during pregnancy, anything less, hemoglobin less than 11 grams will contribute to anemia or will be labeled as anemia. The causes could be the in enhanced demand or due to the hemodilution, which could be physiologically seen during pregnancy. So not only uh, this definition of anemia, the value of less than 11, but a condition where the RBC number or the oxygen carrying capacity is insufficient to meet the physiological needs. In the postpartum females, hemoglobin less than 10 will be classified as anemia. Uh, like majority of disease, uh, today what we talk about the non-communicable disease, this also is an iceberg phenomena, especially in, in women throughout her reproductive age, but also during her pregnancy. Uh, uh, I have seen and heard people talking, I, my hemoglobin never goes beyond 10, educated and a healthy women. So anemia is an iceberg phenomena. Globally, we're talking about the pregnancy, 25% people uh, uh, of pregnant women are affected, 75%, especially in the developing countries. And it is very important when it is associated with the factors of hemorrhage, sepsis, and PIH. In India itself, uh, uh, if we see the data in 2011, the percentage or prevalence of uh, anemic in pregnant female, they are a severe public health problem and a matter of concern. The anemias out of which 90% are iron deficient, they are the nutritional anemias which are more common during pregnancy, but they can be folate deficiency which should be corrected prior because it may lead to neural tube defects. B12 deficiency being very common uh, in the uh, areas of vegetarian diet, the infections of malaria, hookworm still holds the, uh, there and the con uh, certain other condition of hemorrhage or bone marrow or the renal disease will always remain uh, uh, maybe prior to pregnancy also uh, complicating pregnancy. The genetic disorders also on the background. But talking about anemia in pregnancy, the iron deficiency anemia affects around 36% in the developing country. And if you see the prevalence of anemia across is uh, more than 20-25%. This burden in India is more than 80% if we see in the pregnant females, as there is nine times higher iron requirement during pregnancy. The causes could be nutritional, uh, pre-pregnancy poor nutrition, uh, other than the uh, iron deficient, the folate and B12 deficient, as we have talked about the causes of anemia. So the presentation of anemia is usually microcytic, hypochromic, and uh, in the developing country, maybe the intakes are not proper or the demands increases during the pregnancy out of the other causes. And too many and too frequent pregnancy and plural pregnancy may be the cause. Symptoms and signs are usually nonspecific and may mimic normal pregnancy changes unless the anemia is severe, so the neglect may be seen. So the untreated iron deficiency during pregnancy may have a 
high two to three higher risk of worsening of preterm delivery or a low birth baby with lower infant apgr and a poor maternal health also causing increases high risk of bleeding and pph and infection post pregnancy so they can be antepartum complication intrapartum postpartum and fetal outcomes because of the consequences of iron deficiency in anemia mcv serum iron stores serum ferritin may be a give help as a guide of the iron stores in the body and especially uh, the anemia levels but here is a catch the it, uh, so we see the burden of anemia is huge the all the gynecologists are uh, making sure that the females are having uh, adequate level of iron uh, uh, in the female group but definitely the pregnancy outcome with high hemoglobin and increased iron stores have been documented resulting in increased stillbirth and growth restricted in facts a word before i'll talk about the association we have been talking daily uh, the uh, we have talked about the gestational diabetes which is increasingly common public health problem and complicating pregnancies the uh, dr amit uh, discussed the established risk factors of gestational diabetes and definitely there are specific Di uh, uncontrolled diabetes risk in pregnancy and also fetal risk and maternal risk of metabolic syndrome in future also universal testing as uh, rakesh sir was uh, emphasizing not only of sugar but also of thyroid is being done uh, uh, there but what about the impact or association of this a very common i'm talking about something which is very common uh, cbc is done for most of the patient on their first visit doesn't needs a mandate but what is the an association or impact of iron deficiency anemia on prevalence of gdm so this was one of the study published way back in 2004 in the diabetes care it was a retrospective case control study of 242 women with iron deficiency anemia which were less than 10 g per deciliter of hemoglobin and features of ida and were compared with 484 non anemic women uh, matched for year of birth so the three groups were divided anemia at Uh, the first trimester at the time of uh, reporting and the third trimester so group 2 before the third trimester and group 3 only in the third trimester so what uh, was found was the prevalence of gdm in relation to the duration and timing of iron deficiency A significant inverse correlation was found between prevalence of gdm and the severity and duration of anemia so uh, the study concluded the prevalence of gdm is reduced in iron deficiency anemia which probably served as a surrogate for other factors such as nutritional inadequacy and reduced gestational weight gain and further studies on relationship between nutritional improvement and increasing prevalence of gdm in the developing world was warranted so this was an interesting uh, observation uh pregnant or non pregnant women or non women uh free iron uh is uh, produces a uh, inflammatory state and oxidative stress over the pancreatic beta cell and causes decreased insulin secretion this high iron levels in the liver produces insulin resistance this again this high iron at the level of the adipocytes at the level of muscles it produces fatty acid oxidation and Uh, uh, insulin mediated transport so there is decrease in insulin secretion there is enhancement of insulin resistance and a state of uh, uh, insulin resistance can be seen in individuals so the association between high hemoglobin with glucose intolerance may represent a universal phenomena and may be independent of sex or pregnancy status uh just getting in understanding more in detail what happens during the pregnancy pregnancy also is a condition that favors an oxidative stress the iron overload and associated oxidative stress contributes to increased risk of type 2 diabetes excess iron affects the insulin synthesis and secretion insulin increases the oxidation of lipids as we've just discussed this so 
what happens so during normal pregnancy there is an increase in oxidative stress there is routine iron supplementation without iron depletion might also contribute to oxidative stress so the iron deficiency is very common among pregnant women and iron supplementation is a rule and is often recommended left and right a significant association has been observed between the greater iron status and disturbance in the glucose metabolism including increased risk of type 2 in even non pregnant individuals so this high iron stores were significantly associated with elevated risk of type 2 among non pregnant individuals so this was another one study which was uh, done to assess the prevalence of diabetes uh, of i uh, of anemia in diabetic patient so uh, anemia is very common it's a disease uh, that uh, it's uh, diabetes is a, a chronic disease so anemia of chronic disease definitely occurs in diabetes the 22.218 times higher uh, in type 2 uh, anemia is prevalent and one out of five adult patients have anemia and females are nearly three times higher when compared to males another study now there was association we were uh, trying to find about the anemia and gdm so incidence of gestational uh, this was a studies uh, published in turkey uh, incidence of gdm in women with iron deficiency anemia was significantly lower than in non anemic women the nutritional improvement and correction of anemia could be contributory factors in increasing the prevalence of diabetes and gdm gdm is an independent risk factor of macrosomia of increased incidence of uh, large uh, of the uh, children a two fold increase risk of gdm for women in the highest quartile of serum ferritin in the first trimester and nearly three fold in the third trimester this positive correlation suggests that iron stores may play a role in the development of gdm uh, in non anemic gravidas who develop gdm have high level of serum ferritin iron and transferrin so incidence of gdm in women with iga was significantly lower than in the non anemic women in the study which was uh, uh, seen where where comparison of higher hemoglobin uh, hemoglobin levels as an independent risk factors for gdm so this in this uh, study it was shown the hemoglobin levels as an independent associated parameters for gdm high maternal hemoglobin level with a normal variation are an independent risk factor for gdm in this patient but have li little effect on the perinatal outcome one of a famous finnish trial is a multi center uh, study of 1800 uh, uh, population it not, it, on, it also checked the hemoglobin parameters with the association of gdm and the perinatal outcome so this you can see uh there was significant correlation of the pre pregnancy body mass the fasting blood glucose and glucose level in the gtt the systolic blood pressure levels the highest quartile of hemoglobin had more chronic and gestational hy uh, hypertension and the most adverse outcomes of the metabolic parameters another chinese study uh, which studied the dietary iron intake iron status and gestational levity this was a review article which actually reviewed lots of uh, studies and they showed the dietary iron intake and risk of gdm the dietary hem iron intake was significantly associated with increased risk of uh, gdm though this was not uh, inconclusive when it was seen in the non hem iron the, and this was the dietary iron intake the even the iron supplementation the study of the gdm were inconclusive because the protocols were not very stringent Uh, so there is lots of uh, 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 hypothesis, but the, uh, we need more an exhaustive study to uh, follow the uh, the role of oral supplementation, role of injectable supplementation, the effect of him and the non him. That is the the vegetarian source, which may be safer than the non vegetarian source of iron. 
The indicators what uh, the study used for the assessment of the body iron status of the serum ferritin, we also know it is one of the inflammatory markers. So they showed a positive association, though they took CRP as a confounding factor. Another uh, uh, markers they used was soluble transferrin receptor, which is an indication of tissue iron deficiency and not influenced by acute phase reaction. Uh, reaction. This showed an inverse association, the ratio of the uh, soluble transferrin receptor to ferritin in both first and tri uh, trimester. Hepcidin, which is a master regulator of iron hemostasis and doesn't affect it by the inflammation, shows a positive association with gestational diabetes. So, uh, to summarize, anemia, especially nutritional deficiency, are very common in pregnancy and is a public health problem, more so in the developing countries, and they have more over maternal and perinatal mortality and morbidity. Iron deficiency anemia continues to be the commonest anemia during pregnancy owing to diet, poor dietary habits, which is usually treated by oral or iron uh, in uh, parental iron therapy. Folic acid deficiency is associated with fetal uh, neural defect and they should be supplemental pre-pregnancy levels also. And the, the certain geographic areas where thalassemia and sickle cell, so the consideration uh, should be done for these individuals also. And especially the iron stores being higher in these patients. So what I would like to uh, sum up from this talk would be the hemoglobin concentration in pregnancy was positively associated with the risk of GDM, though this was not consistent in most of in all the studies. The serum iron concentration in relation to GDM have also conflicting with mixed reports. The dietary intake of iron, iron supplement or indicators of iron status with respect to subsequent GDM risks are emerging and as of yet are limited. The dietary hem iron take during or before pregnancy is significantly and positively associated with GDM. In general population, however, iron uh, supplements were not significantly related to type 2 diabetes risk. Pregnant women are particularly vulnerable to iron deficiency and related adverse pregnancy outcome and as such are routinely recommended for iron supplementation. So pregnant women without iron deficiency should not use iron replacement therapy. And with this, uh, I would request, as sir has already invited, I would request uh, everyone to block their date for a meeting of UPRSSDI in Prayagraj. And uh, I would uh, rest my case as such. And I would... Uh, be happy to answer any questions.